was a report about Complex being purchased. Um, uh, BuzzFeed and- sells Complex to Network for $108.6 million, will lay off about 16% of the remaining workforce. Uh, Universal Music Group Jimmy Iovine among the investors backing Network's deal for Complex to create a next generation content and shopping experience. So it's very like what I don't know if this is the right word for it, but they're switching gears a little bit to kind of like put more emphasis on like e commerce okay. and like the shopping experience and the super hype beast type of demographic. It seems like not that that's what they're only doing, but I feel like they're kind of insinuating that's where the the direction is going, I'm which kind of makes me worried. Which kind of su- makes me worried. It does wor- it does worry me. I will say on the business aspect, I'm not surprised. What's the best way to make some money? You got to sell some shit, right? I know, but like... Uh, <laughs> it's tough because in this space, you know, ab- advertising money probably runs the game, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's like you'll put out shows, you put out pieces of content and hope to attach a partner with it, right? Yeah. Like an Which affiliate link in, and yeah. all that. Yeah, right? Which then brings in money. So, yeah, this was um, disheartening to me. I brought it in our group chat last week because I want to speak to the person in college right now. We all uh, have similar, we, we all uh, majored in similar things, right? Yeah. Reggie, you, you majored mm-hmm. in journalism, communications, yeah, communications yeah. et cetera. Savon and myself as well. I majored in, I majored in social work. You majored in social, social Wait, work? Wait, really? what the fuck that nigga? I majored in social work. Yeah, he, he, he didn't believe nah, it. Nah, I had a tongue twister. Yeah, he didn't, like, didn't believe it. He no, didn't I, believe I, it. I understood you, Pierre. I understood <laughs> you. You know how you restart your sentence? You're like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I feel you. He said he majored in social work, which I find that's, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. And um, I, I just remember being in college and just being excited for the opportunities in the future in the space, mm-hmm. right? Like personally, I remember being a, a big fan of Vice News. Mm-hmm. Complex was, of course, high on my list. And, you know, in, in hindsight, looking at all of the companies that we looked up to, right? Media companies, right? Because in college, you're assuming like, all right, cool. I could probably get an internship, you know, probably intern at one of these spots. Mm-hmm. Down the line, I'll become a, 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 a lasting employee there and I could set up my career there. These days, all of these media companies are either being bought out or just shut down. Literally all of them. I would say like 80%. They're kind of gone. Like Vice. Yeah. That, oh my God. Like during the 2010s and like that era, they were running that shit like the Navy. Yeah. Like it was the coolest shit ever. Documentaries, newsroom tight as hell. Like yeah. it's crazy. But now they're literally like non-existent. Like literally. Pitchfork as well is not the same. All of these outlets, it's like, these were our goals, which is what Alex is saying. Like, we looked at them like, oh my God, one day, you know, I'm mm-hmm. going to be there. I'm going to be cool, you know, all that. Mm-hmm. And now they're just kind of like, it is so different now. It's so crazy. Like, oh dear. Last week, Vice actually announced that they were essentially shutting down its editorial operations. Yeah, like how crazy is <laughs> crazy. And I think like MTV News kind yeah. of like d- literally does yeah. not exist now. Yeah. Like, yeah. all these things. Damn. And, and to Alex's point, like you said, like, we kind of looked that was the old goal yeah right? that was, was goal. almost yeah. the, the end goal for some yeah. of us is to get in these doors mm-hmm. to to network in these so spaces like after college i'm gonna work here mm-hmm. like it's gonna be lit like i've applied so many different positions at vice mm-hmm. so many different Same. positions at complex yeah uh even mtv at some point like mtv by all of it oh, yeah, like, Viacom, yeah. so to see these things kind of go by the wayside i think um like you said just talking to the collegiate person or even somebody who's just graduated or is still trying to find their way in this digital era this digital media kind of space yeah to see those conglomerates like evaporate Mm -hmm. and shit is kind of crazy and it's discouraging but it's also encouraging absolutely and i want to salute you man what's up everybody needs to hear this Savon was ahead of the curve at least in my world (laughs) back in college wasn't really familiar with podcasts like i knew they were occurring I knew yeah Savon was definitely mad early yeah. and I want to salute Savon for that because he brought the interest to me and then we rebirthed what need to know is now and I want to thank you bro because we kind of set ourselves set ourselves up really nice because we now own something it's a, this is an independent company where we do a lot of the jobs or, or things that we probably would have done for another company right mm-hmm. and we bring in advertisers now right yeah and and we're in charge mm-hmm. of this stuff now right but also we're a part of the algorithm. Mm. Yeah. We're also uh, um, in the media space yeah. without having to attach ourselves. Though we do like when people like to partner with us. Yeah. Please don't stop that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? So, you know, now I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, damn, do majority of these people that are yearning for jobs in the, in the media space, do they have to create their own uh, uh, like that, like their independent own 
mm-hmm. media companies or it's podcasts? Like, I've or? heard that conversation a lot, especially because I'm deep in media Twitter. So I follow a lot of journalists, just like not even just writers, just everybody. And everyone's getting laid off. Nobody save everybody. Crazy. So we're all kind of talking about the same thing. And the general consensus is like, guys, like this is your, well, Alex is like, this is your chance to kind of like start your own thing. Like that's kind of like where... I don't know. That's all we have left, basically. But then, and I get that. That's very powerful. You know, we just talked about how proud we are of like being independent and stuff. Yeah. But we're just the lucky ones because the question is like, what happens when you don't want to do that? Like, you you don't want to be an entrepreneur and start this whole new thing from scratch. Like, what do those people do who want to work in media who don't want to start their own fucking like company? Mm-hmm. So like, what? Like, where 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 do we like turn? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's funny because when I saw the article last week, I actually wanted to ask the question. Um, in a group chat to you, Reggie, like, how do you feel being a journalist, being in digital media, um, seeing all of these kind of layoffs and some of your, um, you know, peers, contemporaries, I'm sure, like as a journalist, as somebody who lives this shit for real, Mm -hmm. right? Like, do you have any concerns? Does it make you worried? Anything? I just feel like, um, not that I'm like numb to it, but being uh, in the media world and especially as a writer, because they, we're literally at the bottom because the first, we're the, like the most like unvalued. They'll always pivot to video first. So I've just kind of like been through this for the past like 10 years. Like I've, I've always been like, I could lose my job at any second. The media world, like there's always layoffs. This isn't like a new thing. So it wasn't like a super shock to me, but it's just always discouraging. Like I'm feeling as discouraged as ever, but also encouraged as ever because now it's like a fresh new like renaissance. But I don't know. It, it, like I'm not really like, I don't know. I'm just kind of like always talking with my peers about like, and and I have peers that were directly affected by the complex layoffs. Really? It was really, yeah, I'll tell you off camera, but it was very sad. Like literally laid mm-hmm. off, like girl, I'm laid off. So like, I don't know. I'm just kind of like always talking with my peers about like, what should we do? That's kind of the stage that I'm in. Like guys, and I'm I'm like friends with a lot of people my age who are so talented, mm-hmm. all going through the same thing. Like you guys, like we're always just having these conversations and like kind of just being there for each other. Fresh out of school, <clears throat> I had to get a job at AT&T. Mm-hmm. Real shit. Yeah. Now granted, I am one of those people who's very focused on the things I want to do and complete, right? So thankfully, Savon and I shared the desire and the hunger to continue to keep doing episodes, continue to keep putting out content. That never left us. I'm really thinking about the people where they're going to be forced to get a regular job to start, but because it's so difficult to find any sort of opportunity now, there'll never be a moment for them to circle back and visit the things that they really want to do. You know, especially in media. So it, yeah. it's tough. And what's trending too is there's talks of most jobs in the future not even requiring requiring a bachelor's degree. Yeah. So they got that's us. Another, that's another thing that <laughs> yeah, they got you us. gotta make uh, make room for. Or... Yeah. It sucks because I hope <laughs> the people's writing that I'm reading actually has some form of education. Mm-hmm. It doesn't necessarily know, right? mean like you need a qualification to inform. Mm-hmm. And you know, in, in, in print media, at least, an editorial piece, and I believe, like this podcast, and it's kind of dope. We all do have bachelor degrees, but we don't need degrees to do what it is that we're doing, even mm-hmm. though we're called like the need to know. So maybe I'm contradicting what it <laughs> nah, is. No, no, no. We we, nah, we need the creep up. <laughs> we got degrees <laughs> here. Yeah. We do. But I don't know if we needed it. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I we just. Need the creep up. I don't know. I thought it was an interesting concept because for me, my biggest fear is Wi Fi shutting down. Yeah. Yeah. Because if Wi Fi goes. Then we all I'm go. screwed. Like nah, I'm screwed as far as like how you know how I kind of make my money in in the digital era. Even even in um not even just digital, I, what we do is considered entertainment. There's mm-hmm. been times where I go to myself and I go, "How important is entertainment to people?" Mm. Real shit. Like yeah. like you said, like if the shit was to go to the sh- to the shit can tomorrow, yeah. Yeah. I don't even think what we do is really that prominent because our lives are gonna be heralded around madness. So we won't even have the time to really entertain or people will be so busy in fight or flight mode that mm-hmm. they don't give a fuck about entertainment. Yeah. You, yeah. you know what we'll do? We'll just adapt to what's next or the next thing. Naturally. Because that's what that's what human nature does. Yeah, like we always do, yeah. Yeah, like Naturally. different trends, Naturally. whatever is trending next or next on the docket, that's what we're going to wind up having to do just out of basic survival instincts. Mm-hmm. It sucks because Vice in particular... They had such a niche way of going about their media and their content and their yes. docuseries, right? Yeah. Like it so was so shows. unique to who they were, like to that brand. This is not the right word, but it was giving a little bit like hipster, not hipster, but sure. like sure. kind of I'm out of the th- box. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure, yeah. for sure. And to know that somebody who, because the thing in the podcast space, and this is something that you know, as 
the market continues to get saturated, right? Mm-hmm. Like we always talk about the big dogs coming in, like now Shannon Sharp and yeah. uh, we got Mace and Cam, and this is just in the sports world. Yeah. But from all over, like we have the the people who have the backing, who have the funding, who have the fans, who have the followers jumping into the podcast space. For people like ourselves who don't have that, who don't come with that, who don't come from that, you have to carve out some kind of nuance and some kind of niche, yeah. right? And so the fact that Vice actually had that as a media company, mm-hmm. like they were very distinctive in who they were. When you saw a documentary and you kept up with Vice, you knew the tone of it. You know, you know, even the color, everything about Vice said, this is Vice. And the fact that they couldn't withstand the changes in media and editorial, it's like, fuck, like, are we only going to be able to read like the top, top news? And I don't want to say any names to like incriminate us, but you know what I'm saying? Like if they couldn't survive, it's a little bit discouraging if you're in that field to me because like what the fuck do i have to do to sustain this yeah Mm -hmm. and i guess i wanted to ask you guys can we highlight things that vice did well and the reason why i'm asking that is because how many of those things actually matriculate to money right like i knew i remember they had a bunch of shows and i know that costs money right earlier i brought up advertisements and things of that nature but i'm thinking to myself in order for this to really transform a change or maybe even go back to how it was a little bit there's gonna need to be more money being put in this space well going back to reggie's point (laughs) when she was talking about being a writer and always knowing like she was kind of at the bottom of the totem pole in that sense and in that pyramid that's why i stopped writing that's why I ran away from that shit so fast when I realized that. Like, <laughs> I'm like, that was like, me. I gotta do it for the love. Who didn't know that shit? <laughs> the love gonna run out. I did not realize that shit, and I'm writing to out. this day. Like, I remember, I my passion was writing. Like, yeah, that was yeah. who I that felt. Was, it yeah, was my yeah, yeah. B. I was like, oh my god, I love writing. I write about everything. Give me a top. I'm gonna write it. Fifty seconds. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write. Give me Adderall. I'm gonna write. Give me Adderall. I'm gonna take a right. I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write. I'm gonna be ready. Y'all, fuck. I'm gonna write, and then. I realize, wait, hold up. Hold on. And he's also Mr. Money Man, so he's like, I'm out of here. Dollars. Y'all have fun. You need dollars. Let me go fucking podcast <laughs> like, and Reg- try to get signed. <laughs> you know what, Reggie? <laughs> you have this. Like, I just, uh, so yeah, I, I'm, it's scary. It has to be scary. Very it's scary. scary because, like, Complex was one of, like, the more pop in, like, brands, like, very front facing. And even they got hit with this massive ass change. Look. And, like, at 20, in 2018, I worked at Genius, and they mm. were, like, the most flourishing. The coolest, Another hottest one. on the block, Another and now one. they're completely like just they just upload a few YouTube videos a week, and they're like non-existent. Oh my no God. offense, but that's the truth. Genius. I was in shock. So when, look at what ha- what's happening. I was in shock when I heard that Complex is only being sold for a hundred million dollars. Now, granted, mm-hmm. I ain't got that, yeah, <laughs> I ain't got it. Mm-hmm. So let me not sit up and yeah, act like yet. Yeah, I don't got it yet because the Lord is going to bestow it upon my life. But they were, they were bought for way more than that. And now their value has gone down. I think so. they were bought for about 300 yeah. up, upwards of that. Uh-huh. So to see them be sold for deals that I see Joe Rogan mm-hmm. take for you know his, his re-ups yeah. and you got a whole staff over there. That shit is very frightening to see. Streamers are taking more money on from year to year than what that shit is even being so far evaluated for. It's it's eye-opening to say the least, right? Mm. And that's why I'm saying to myself, like, all right, cool. Well, how do we be- bring money back into this space? You know what's really cool, though? Like, yeah. in, like, a few years, we're definitely going to watch this episode back and be like, yo, remember when we were going through this shift? Yeah. And then we're going to see where we wound up. Yeah, like, so it's, it's That's going to be cool. cool. Yeah, I can't like wait. Some of, the, some of the shows that were on Vice actually wound up going to, like, Hulu, mm. somewhere on Netflix. Right, and like somewhere you could throw ads on it. Yeah, and Vice were <laughs> Vice did original content too, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Diza Samira on Vice Land. Yeah, they were on Vice. I was actually gonna mention them because we see some of these, like in particular, I'm thinking of Vice Land with Diza Samira, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking of Everyday Struggle with Joe and Act, the yeah. original kind of on like, Complex. Mm-hmm. On Complex, right? If those shows would have, you know, remained on those networks. Would they have been enough to generate and trickle down into all facets of that brand, of right. that company, mm-hmm. right? Because if, like, we saw what Decent Zamaro did, like, blew the fucking lid off the roof, knocked down so many doors, got on linear TV, uh, took over digital media. Like, we know they were able to thrive in any arena. Yeah. Right? And for whatever reason, maybe, Reggie, you have the background story on why they didn't continue with Vice. 
but oh they went to showtime they went to showtime and got their own show yeah exactly but for whatever reason vice couldn't make it work because whenever you like get discovered or whenever you grow budget. with somebody like a budget is a thing but you also give them in in most cases in most business cases you give them the first look yeah, yeah. right yeah. you say hey vice all right it's hot out here um i'm people over in showtime or hbo whatever they call they're them. looking they're, they they want to give me a hundred million dollars so i'm coming to you first because we built this together because i have loyalty to you because we like this working because it's successful I'm going to give you the first look. Let's make something work. Let's make something happen. Cool. Like, I wonder if that was ever a conversation. Yeah. I wonder if they could have made something work. And I wonder if Vice kind of regrets that. Because when you get something that's lightning in a bottle, even the way complex and um, everyday struggle with academics and Joe. What a right? time. Like, yeah. that was, a, we still have content that will live on forever from that show. Memes that will live on, <laughs> moments that will live on forever from that show. Now, I don't know if it lasted more than two years, right? Right. So, like, when you have something like that in your possession as a complex, as a vice, and you don't nurture it and you don't appreciate it or value it, um, you know, uh, could it be the demise of their networks? I, see, mm -hmm. I'll say this, right? I don't know if it's them not taking uh, the Bodega Boys brand seriously, but really what they could allocate to them. And, and you know, that's why I, oh, I'm still sticking on the money here because I'm sure they knew they were super talented, right? Like you said, they had the first look. They're in house. They know what's going on, but as the show progresses to get bigger and bigger, and host um, maybe their asks are increasing, and you know you can't fit what they're looking for, especially mm -hmm. monetarily wise, then you just gotta let them walk. Yeah, right? and they ended like very like well, like it was all love. They literally had like a farewell episode party, like it was on very good terms. So it was definitely like a healthy goodbye. Like hey, we outgrew this. Yeah. We're going on to greener pastures. That, and... that that don't say nothing, but yo, the bag dried up. Yeah, <laughs> but we're all good. But like it good. wasn't a bad split. Yeah, yeah Showtime Make got a bigger work. one. And and I'm and maybe and I don't know. I'm not saying like, and I don't want to speculate on their situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just thinking, let's put ourselves in a situation, right? Like, let's say we found we stumbled into an opportunity, right? Like, let's let's figure something out. Maybe give me a percentage. I, I don't I don't know what that looks like. Like, I see what you're saying. Though. For um the saying. Miami, I forgot their fucking the soccer team name, but Miami they wanted Lionel Messi, right? Yeah. yeah. He has a percentage of all the sales or of the team. As he's also playing, like, that was the incentive. That's hey, messy though. come over to. But I know, and that's what Deces and Mero was to Vice. They were like Lionel Messi were because they? once they left, absolutely. Do you not like? No, I'm learning in real time, real shit. Because they were that hear, valuable to that network. When I hear Messi, bro, Messi is global, yeah, and it was Inter, Inter Miami uh, FC. Same. Inter Miami, Inter thank Miami, you, yeah. thank you. But. Yeah. I'm talking about for that field. I'm not saying they are as popular as fucking no, Messi, no, no, obviously. No, no. Leon, he's fucking yeah. number one athlete in the world. Yeah. But what I'm saying is in the media space of in, in Vice and Complex Genius, all of these companies, mm -hmm. if you can get a Joe Budden in your door mm -hmm. to partner with you, to collaborate with you, if you can get a Jesus and Mero mm -hmm. to do that, academics, if you get these people who are helping you build your company... Literally, right? If they're yeah. a cornerstone of like, your do company, do everything you can to keep me. Basically, why exactly? Yeah. Like, why not do everything you can to keep that partnership fruitful? Right. That's what I don't understand, mm -hmm. especially in this digital era where now we see. Fast forward till today, they're all going under. Mm. They're all going under. You know what? Like, scares me because we're we're all talking like the same thing. Like, oh my gosh, media is kind of like in this like crazy downfall right now. But it can like actually happen. Like, it could mm -hmm. because I think about the blog era. Like, it actually ended. Like, the blog it's era over. is over. over. So mm -hmm. literally, this complex vice, um, whatever new other blog or whatever other site. Literally, like we can see the end of it, and that really scares me. Like, it's, it's funny how we're bringing up independent entities, but. Independent entities is probably the reason, Reggie, why shit is dying. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Oh. Full circle. Even, even Axe says whenever, when he streams sometimes that most of the time, most of the reason why he's independent is because he can make more money. And he doesn't owe his allegiance to anyone in Trapping particular. Down. No, no producer telling you what you can and cannot do. Yep. But Free and, speech. You know what's funny? Like, so using Ack as an example, he was willing to continue the relationship with Complex. So had they not forced him into a situation where he had to be independent, he may not have ever known he wanted to be independent, which would have kept your company afloat. Yeah. Because you have the biggest, one of the biggest hip hop media outlets, streamers, voices under your umbrella. Yeah. But because you didn't figure it out, 
Now he goes his way, you go your way, and he's doing all right. Can't front. This was eye opening for me because I think a lot of these companies really don't have the money we assume for them to have. Real shit. And I can, and I can see that. That's the scariest thing. Especially for me. if they're taking yeah. the bigger chunk. Yeah, of that's the, the eye opening part to me. Real shit. Where it's like, no, y'all yeah, yeah, got it. Y'all got all these millions. Y'all been open for all of these years. Or, you know, all these board members. Yo, dog. But not really. And, but and, the money not really what we thought. Yeah. And two, most companies are, you could say, are egotistic. So they can't really see themselves going under yeah. because they make the the person or the entity or the the artist or whoever's uh, uh, associated with them, right? Right. Yeah, it, it kind of makes sense. I can't wait to see this develop. Thank yeah. y'all for throwing that in the group chat too. I think that was a dope, dope article. And, and like you said, yeah. people our age, younger, and even years older, I think, you know, that time of media, mm. it was like it was the golden era for us. I I, I remember yes. applying to all of those all companies, of wanting to be in those rooms. They hit me back. To but salute. <laughs> like I had to do mad <laughs> follow up calls. Like I remember, bro. Like it was it was a time. So yeah. to kind of see where we are today, it's a little bit scary. It's a little bit different.